Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we are going to talk about 1.5, which is on factoring quadratic with leading coefficient as 1. Same thing, first, let's actually do a little exploration to kind of get the big idea of this lesson. We all have learned how to multiply already. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 5. You can either use your string method or use your box method. So if I do my string, I'll get x squared plus 5x, and then 2 times x and 2 times 5. So I'll get 2x and 8x. That simplifies to be x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now we're going to kind of think backwards. What if I didn't give you all of that? All I gave you is this, and I'm asking you, how can you put them inside parentheses to figure out is going to be x plus 5 and x plus 2. And kind of get some idea, you may notice that 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 plus 2 is 7. Well, it seems like we just need two numbers that can multiply to get a 10, and then add up to a 7. Let's try that idea. What if I gave you this question now? Again, the number on the back is going to be what they need to multiply to be. So let's think about it. The front seems to just all be x. And then we need two numbers that multiply to be a 10 and add up to a, an 11. Uh, well, the numbers, you don't have a lot of options for 10. 10 could equal to 2 times 5, or 10 could equal to 10 times 1. Well, 10 plus 1 is 11, so the number will have to be 10 and 1. Well, now let's change the number. What if I keep the middle number? It's still 11, but I change the back number to an 18. Let's see. X, X. So it seems this time, the numbers I need, two numbers actually add up to 11, but need to multiply to be an 18. You, this time, I'm going to try to see if I can break down 11. 11 could be 1 plus 10. Well, that does not work. Or 2 plus 9. Oh, wait. 2 times 9 is 18. But let me check. Let's check to make sure that's the only option. 3 plus 8. Well, that doesn't seem to work. 3 times 8 is 24. And the next one, 4 plus 7. 4 times 7 is 28. 5 plus 6. 5 plus 6 is 11. Oh, 5 times 6 is 30. That's also not 18. So the only option is... 2, and 9. And there we go. That's how we can actually factor a quadratic when the leading coefficient is a 1, because all of these are just beginning with x squared. We'll learn the more complicated ones in the next lesson. But this is the big idea for today's lesson. Now let's move on to some definitions. We have seen before, factoring is the opposite operation of multiplying polynomials. Uh, that's why you can always using the, use the multiplication to actually check if you factored it correctly or not. Quadratic, that's kind of a main theme of this whole year. Uh, quadratic is a polynomial with a degree of 2, or in other words, you will always see this x squared in the expression or function or uh, equation. Standard form for quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, c are all real number. Well, real number are just numbers that are like we see typically. Uh, we will learn more about the other kind of number, which is called complex number in unit 3. There is actually one extra requirement. A cannot be 0. Because if A is 0, you actually don't even have an x squared, then of course it won't be called a quadratic. Because you may just have a B, bx plus c. Well, that's a linear. So A can't be 0. B can be 0. C can be 0. As long as you have this x squared, that is a quadratic. Now let's move on to an example with some steps x squared plus 10x plus 24. The first step, of course, whenever we do any kind of factoring, the most important thing is to check if there's GCF or not. Because if there is, that sometimes can simplify the process for us. And next, we already know they are going to be factored into two parentheses. That's kind of uh, the, main, the main thing about quadratics. They will always be broken down into two parentheses if possible. So we're going to draw two sets of parentheses and put the assigned variable in each set. So in this case, it's x squared, so I'm just going to put an x in each one. The reason it says uh, the assigned variable, well, sometimes I could change that into like an m or an n, an s, whatever letter I want to use. So just be careful with that. Next, we need to find a pair of numbers that multiply to give you the constant, which is the number on the back, and add to give the middle coefficient. We typically start with the c because 
there's a limited amount of uh, options when two mu numbers multiply to give a certain number. But adding, well, if I, well, 10 is not too many, but if I give you a number, say, like 30 in the middle, well, you have a lot of options to add. So we typically start with the number on the back, which is your C. So let's break down 24. In order to have 24, uh, I typically put things in order. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. If you keep going, 5, nothing. But if you go 6 and 4, well, that's already repeating, so we don't need to write that again. So these are our four options, and we need the numbers to also add up to the middle coefficient. 1 plus 24 is 25. That's not work. 2 plus 4, 12 is 14. Does not work. 3 plus 8 is 11. Still doesn't work. 4 plus 6 is 10. It's the number we need. So it's going to be a plus 4 and a plus 10. Yeah, plus 6. So the last step, each number goes into one set of parentheses. The final answer should be the product of two binomials. So it's going to be a plus 4 and a plus 6. So that's how we can figure it out. And you might be wondering, do I have to like always make this combination table? You don't have to. The more you work on these, the easier it will become and the faster you will recognize some of the number combinations. Now let's move on to more examples. Number one. So x, that means we need to start with the x inside both parentheses. And then we need numbers to multiply and get 25. So 25, let's break it down. You can either get 1 and 25 or 5. In fact, these are the only two options. You see, that's why we start with the number on the back with multiplication. Because if we start with 10, you will have 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, 3 plus 7, 4 plus 6, 5 plus 5. That's a lot of options. So 1 plus 25 is 26. That's not a 10. 5 plus 5 is a 10. There we go. That's 5 plus 5. And since the two parentheses are the same, you can also just write it as x plus 5 squared. That's example 1. Moving on, example 2. Same thing. Start with the x inside each parentheses. Then we need two numbers that multiply to get. So let's break it down. 1, 12. 2, 6, 3, 4. If you keep going higher, 4, 3. So you may notice I typically just start uh, small on the smaller with the smaller number on the left side. And then as soon as I kind of need to switch, I know that's when I stop. Okay, let's check the uh, addition. 1 plus 12 is 13. Nope. 2 plus 6 is 8. Nope. 3 plus 4. Yes, that is the 7 that we need. There's a plus 3 and a plus 4. That is example 2. Moving on, example three. Oh, things got a little bit more complicated because now we have a subtraction sign. So let's uh, still set it up. It still start with x squared in the front, so it's gonna be x in each parentheses. But this time we need two numbers to multiply and get negative 12. So you should carry the sign with the number, but let's uh, start still write down some combinations. So first we have one and 12, and then we have two and six, then we have 3 and 4. These are the combinations to get 12, but now we need to decide about the negative sign. So let's think about it. We need two numbers that add up to a positive 4. Which means if we give a negative sign, let's say it's going to be a negative 12. Well, negative 12 plus 1 is going to be negative 11. It's going to be in the negative. So if you give the negative sign to the bigger number, it's still going to be more negative. But the middle sign is a plus, so that tells us we should actually give the negative sign to the smaller numbers. Okay, there we go. So negative 1 plus 12 is 11. Does not work. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. That does work. Negative 3 plus 4 is just a 1, so that still doesn't work. Which means the combination that we need is a negative 6, and a negative 2, and a 6. So minus 2 plus 6. There we go. Again, you can always multiply to check. In this case, you have a minus 2x and a plus 6x, which is going to be combined to be a plus 4x in the middle. That's example 3. Moving on, example 4. Same thing. Let's set up. It's going to be x inside each parentheses. And we still need two numbers that multiply to get negative 12. So let's start breaking it down. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. But let's pay attention to the middle sign. It's actually a negative 1. So that is the number that we need. If it's negative, that means we need the number to be more negative when they're added together. Only one of them could have a negative sign to be multiplied and get a negative 12. So I'm going to have to give the negative sign to the bigger numbers this time. 
1 plus negative 12 is negative 11. That does not work. 2 plus uh, negative 6 is negative 4. Still doesn't work. 3 plus negative 4 is a negative 1. That does work. So the two numbers will be a plus 3 and a minus 4. So that's kind of how we decide about the sign. We use the middle sign to uh, decide which number, the bigger or the smaller one, would get the negative sign. Moving on, example 5. You can pause here and try this one by yourself. Now let's check. Each parenthesis will get an x to begin with, and we need two numbers to multiply and get negative 6 too. So we could have 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and then 4 and 4. Since it's a negative 16, that means one of the numbers would have to be negative. That's why, where we need to look at the middle sign. They need to add up and be more negative because it's a negative 6. So that means the bigger numbers need to have a negative sign. 1 plus negative 16 is a negative 15. Does not work. 2 plus negative 8 is a negative 6. Does work. 4 plus negative 4 is a 0. Does not work. So I need a 2 and a negative 8. But I do want to mention that. So you see, when the two numbers are the same, and they're just different opposite signs, that it will give you an add up to a 0, which means in the middle will be a 0x. And that leads us to example 6. You see, we don't even have a middle term, but don't forget that just means you have a 0x. So I can rewrite this question to be x squared plus 0x minus 49, which is still a quadratic with three terms. So start each parenthesis with x, and I need two numbers to multiply and get negative 49. Well, you don't have a lot of options, 1 and 49, 7 and 7. It's negative, so I should give the negative to, well, it's actually a plus zero, so it doesn't quite matter which one has a negative sign. So you can either give the negative to one, that's going to be a 48, which has nothing to do with zero, but as soon as you see zero, you know you need to look for the pair that are the same, but one of them is going to have a negative sign. So there we go. It's going to be a plus seven and a negative seven, because they have to cancel. This gives you a positive 7x, these two, and this, these two give you a negative 7x, so they actually cancel out. That's why we have a 0x in the middle. Moving on. Now it's time for you to kind of pause here and try a few more. So example 7 and 8, you can try it out. Now let's check. x and x. And the number we need is a positive 24. Let's see the combinations. We have 1 and 24. We have 2 and 12, and we also have 3 and 8, and then 4 and 6. Ooh, but here's the issue. The number is positive, however, we need a negative. We need them to add up to a negative. Well, 1 times 24 is actually not the only way to get a 24. If they're both negative, that could still multiply and get a positive 24. So this just means both sides would have the negative sign. Negative 1 plus negative 24 is negative 25, does not work. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is a negative 14, does not work. Negative 3 plus negative 8 is a negative 11, still doesn't work. Lastly, negative 4 plus negative 6, that does work. So both parentheses would just have a negative sign. Okay, and example 8. 4x squared minus 4x minus 48. Well, you kind of see... Well, even when I'm reading the question, there are some repeated numbers. So clearly, this one has a GCF. GCF is a 4, which again means I'm dividing every single thing by 4, leaving the 4 outside. So inside the parentheses, I would have x squared minus x minus 12 left. So I'm going to factor the quadratic inside the parentheses. So I need two numbers to multiply and get a negative 12. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. I need a negative 1, so that means the bigger number should have the negative sign. And you can check the first two does not work. 3 plus negative 4 is the only one that actually works. So that tells me it would be x plus 3, x minus 4. But don't forget, we still have the 4 in the front that we have factored out. To the GCF in the first step. And that is uh, my final answer. So something for you to kind of think about, how do you decide which parentheses gets the negative? So that's something that we kind of talked about in the examples already. You can think about it, or you can check back in some of the examples.
That is everything for 1.5. Uh, thank you.